This video may not be for everybody, but if you're a geek and if you like making stuff, you're going to appreciate this next part. Hey there, Mission Control. Well, I'm all done waiting for the parts to arrive. The new motors are here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The new motor controllers are here. So we need to put this on and make sure everything works today. I got 46 CAM files created. Uh, CAM is computer aided machining. Uh, these are the files that I needed to go from CAD, computer aided design. That's SolidWorks. That's our three dimensional uh, parts that we've created. And then turn them into CAM files, uh, which then create G code, <laughs> the alphabet soup here. And uh, we're going to be loading that onto the CNC router today. And hopefully, God willing, everything is going to work out and we're actually going to start cutting some parts. Before we do the cutting, we need to put the new motor controller on and we also need to create the mold guides, as I call them. They're really just guides, cut guides, uh, if you will. Uh, so let me show you how I came up with that first. So I actually have really come to appreciate using Microsoft OneNote. And uh, this is OneNote. And the cool thing about OneNote is no matter where I'm at, whether I'm on my phone, or whether I'm up at the house or whether I'm out here, <clears throat> I have access to all my notes in one place. So it's really, really nice. I'm not a big fan of everything on the cloud, but uh, for this particular thing, having my machining notes out there isn't uh, that big a deal. So here's what we have. We have this square right here. And then these pink things represent one inch guides. I have that HDPE uh, one inch material that I had left over from Hab One. And I'm gonna use that and we're gonna create a uh, part holding guide uh, that is changeable. So there's one section here and there's another section over here. I have a bunch of one inch section structural members as I call them, that'll be pinched in this guide over here, which then I can change its pinching location based on just drilling holes and putting screws in. And we're gonna, we're gonna kind of build that as we go. I'm not gonna build it all at once. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna put the two guides on and the end cap up here. We'll also put an end cap down here and then I'll cut this piece. And then as we start to cut, there's, uh, I don't know how many that is. <laughs> Looks like 15, maybe 20 different variations that we need to have this thing at. Well, not different variations. Uh, there's probably about seven, it looks like, seven unique uh, variations, give or take. <clears throat> uh, we'll get that set up. And then we'll also set up this guide, the top guide, uh, the bottom guide, and this guide here uh, so that we can have this change uh, shape as well. Let's get out there and get started. I'm definitely running out of room in here to do work. <laughs> no doubt about that, but that's a good, good thing. We got some great blessings here to have these tools. Uh, so now I'm just marking this piece here. We're gonna cut it on the chop saw. Well, I apologize for the space constraint here uh, to get a great shot. <laughs> Behind you is a plasma table, the bandsaw, and a door. Uh, so what we have here, I, I'm, this piece that I had left over from when I put the sacrifice board on is actually just right. So we're going to leave it on here. And what we're going to be using here, these are the pieces that I was talking about, the one inch pieces that are left over. And we're going to be putting them on here <clears throat> and creating these guides. So let's say this is the cut piece here, which is, this one's clearly crooked. Uh, we're going to be pinching it in with two and then we have the end caps that will be on here. And these will be at different locations. That way. Uh, we can actually like put different size pieces in here. Okay, so I had to take a break from the uh, mold. I need to move the head here. In order to do that, we need it working and functional. So I just got done moving the wires over to the new unit. And the old one's out. And the new one is in. So I'm not sure what went wrong with uh, this guy here, but what ended up happening there's clearly a burnout that occurred uh, right down here uh, where it got too hot. So my best guess is maybe some particulate or something got up in there. My second best guess is that when I first had this all put together, there was a loose wire up here, which I just found another one. And uh, I ended up finding that that wire was arcing a little bit and I found it and tightened it, of course, but maybe, maybe it did some damage uh, before I discovered the arc and fixed it. So we got a green light where there used to be a red light. I think we're back in business. We are. 
excellent. I'm putting the inside part on first, and what I did is the straight edge on this board is over here, and it's measured relative to the home axis. So what we're doing is lining it up with the marks, pre-drilling, and that's as good as I'm gonna be able to make it straight. We do want a nice straight edge. That is importante. All right, so we got the first guide put in here. It wants to be a little tight, which is good. We want them to be tight. That way it doesn't move when the router's going over it. That's nice and tight. Oh yeah. Oh, that's gonna be nice. That holds it in there. Nice and tight. That's the longest piece that we have to cut. So that's gonna sit in there real nice. And then the good thing is we can home it once. We can set the zero, I'm sorry. We can set the zero for this, working on this tool, on this guide. And then all we have to do is put these in, you know, come in, put these in there. There we go. That'll probably loosen up a little too as we get going. But yeah, that friction will hold it right. Nice in there, nice and tight. Then just have that go over, do its job. And we come in, you know, flip it. That side's a little looser, that's the cut side. Yeah, flip it again. There we go. Flip it again. We got four sides and we're done. This is my design book. This is the book that has all the drawings that have taken me months to get the design and then to the drawings. And let me tell you, I want to talk to the kids out there right now. There is nothing more rewarding than having an idea and seeing it turn into reality and then actually being able to build it especially when it's something meant to help people. And I've done some cool things in my life, some that I'm proud of, many things I'm not proud of, but working on The Real Martian and, and chasing this dream and taking the risk and working with Eden now and trying to bring this tower and these types of products to market has been extremely rewarding, especially when you get to go from just what's up in here, an idea, and then turn it into these. Right, And I think a lot of people never even experience that in their life and it is extremely rewarding. So to the kids, if you have ideas, if you've been called a dreamer and <clears throat> you wanna make money doing that, be an engineer. Be an engineer, study engineering and do these things. And in today's world, you don't even have to go to school to be an engineer. You, you can study it online. There's classes that you can get almost for free it's not about the degree, it's about the knowledge. And an engineering education will give you a lot of knowledge that you need. Now, I'm not saying that engineer is better than anybody else. I'm saying that if you have dreams and you like to see them come reality when it comes to ideas of making things, being in engineering or fabrication, manufacturing, this industry is extremely rewarding, especially when it's something like what we're trying to do where it's making things that are gonna help people. So. <clears throat> A little bit of a heart to heart there. Um, I really hope that this channel helps inspire kids. So uh, if you're out there and you're watching this, that message was for you and uh, praise God for letting you hear it. All right, back to this. This is the design book. Uh, we're gonna start building the base first. It's the most complicated piece that has to be built. It has the most pieces in it. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we have to go through in this process is figure out the manufacturing steps. Uh, so how we're actually going to put it all together. What's the right sequence, which uh, rather than just sitting and thinking of it all, I figured, you know, we'll figure that out as we go. Because if I just sit there and think about it anyway, all the manufacturers out there that are, are not engineers that hate engineers, they're all telling you right now, or they're yelling at the screen going, stupid engineers don't know nothing about how to put anything together. And usually they're right, but this particular engineer uh, has now gone through the whole process. And, and I understand your pain. <laughs> I understand your pain. So... Uh, that's tipping the hat to the manufacturers out there. You guys are awesome. None of this would be possible without you. Uh, rather than trying to figure it all out just by sitting at my desk, I figured we'd just come out here and do it. So the very first part that we have is the actual side panels, uh, which go right here. And then we're going to do all the side panels, and then we're going to come in and we're going to do all the inside panels there. And that is just the sequence of the drawings. I've, I've not done this before <laughs> on this machine. So we're going to do lots of testing first before we start cutting. I have an eighth of an inch bit on there, which is the primary bit that's gonna be doing all of this cutting. We're gonna run it high first. We're gonna put the piece in here like what we have. This is the piece that's already secured in, in place. We're gonna make sure the origin is set correctly, which I've gone through and marked here. And then we're gonna run it dry and uh, 
by dry, I mean, we're not cutting into it. I'm used to plasma. <laughs> so um, we're gonna run it, make sure it all works, and then we'll actually sync the bit in and we'll start cutting. So we need to load the G-code. Let's go to the computer and get that done. All right, so here we're in Mach 3. We're gonna home the system. Homing is the very first thing you need to do. This is the home corner. So it's gonna go through and that is, what are you doing? What is going on? It's backwards. Uh-oh, I think my motor change did something. All right, we're gonna have to fix that. Pause. I think we got it fixed. We'll find out, let's try it again. Yep. All right, there was a setting in here that was different for the previous controller than that one. That's interesting and curious. I'm not sure what it is, but it doesn't matter at this point. So we're gonna send it home. And then what we'll start doing is we'll load our first G code file, which is on the network here, grow tower. And luckily I matched up all the drawings. Uh, so some of the red lines, you can see I have red lines here. It tells me what operation needs to be done on the CNC. One CNC operation, eighth inch bit, which is 3.175 millimeters. It tells me how to set up the mold guide, which is currently set up for, and it's drawing number one. So those are all, sorry, hopefully you saw all that. Operations, mold guides, drawing number one. And I labeled all the files the same as the drawing number. That way I can just choose the file from the drawing and execute. All right, so the machine is now homed. This is the home location. You can choose your home location. This is the one that I chose. You could have chose that far corner over there. Uh, you could choose a different location, but this is the one that makes the most sense. Uh, for what we're doing. And now I have to look at where I'm setting up my origin at, and then I have to get this thing lined up. Super awesome guide is gonna be right in the darn way. This guide is right in the way, so we're gonna need to get that out of there. Luckily, with the screws, I love these torque screws too. They're so nice. We can just get that out of the way like that and reset. Now, <clears throat> there's a few cool things going on here that I'm actually really excited about. And I take a moment to tell you, <laughs> this video may not be for everybody, but if you're a geek and if you like making stuff, you're going to appreciate this next part. What's cool about the CNC setup is not that all the files are made, which take time to build. It took me two days to get 46 files made for all the parts. We get it all set up with all the holes in all the right place. The, the table itself, the guide itself is a design effort. So as I go through and I drill all these holes and I do all these things, I could measure this all out. I could have thought through all this. I could have done it all in CAD and had exactly where all the holes go. It, it was non-value added at the time because I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna find mistakes and things like that. So it's just better for me to go do it. But by the way, I had two cups of coffee today, feeling it. <laughs> as this table, as we get everything all dialed in, take the notes from the table, go translate that into a CAD part and then into a CAM part and we'll actually drill and set everything correctly on this table. And then we'll have just the perfect guide where it's like, boom, 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 here's all your holes. This is where you put it for this setup, put that on the drawings. And I can hand this whole package over Right? In theory, when you do it this way, you can hand this whole book over to someone who knows how to run this machine. You know, it's not someone just off the street, but knows how to run the machine. And all they have to do is follow the instructions in here, where to put your guides, where to put the part, home everything, go. Right? So that's very exciting for me. Um, it also means at Eden, what we're, where we're at, we're not just garage machining a part here. This is real deal. We're headed towards production. We're, we're maturing to production level quality. You know, yeah, I'm doing it in my garage and all that, but that's, that's because we're a uh, shoestring budget here and we're making this all work as best we can. But in theory, once I get this figured out, I can even start selling these things out of the shop here. This is the part that I'm not very good at. Cause you gotta get it just right. And it's the center of the bit. Ah, keep hitting the wrong button. All right, so now what we're doing is we're setting the home for this set, this section of the guide, of the mold guide. Once it's home, once, I'm sorry, we're setting the zero, blah, 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 blah. coffee. We're setting the zero on this section of the mold guide. And once I set zero, which is as simple as zip, 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 that's it. 
everything is now zeroed here. And that means every part we put into this mold guide is now zeroed correctly, and I only have to do it once. So if I do all the parts here first for the base, which is what our plan is, I don't have to go through this process every time. It's gonna be a lot faster. So when we're thinking about our manufacturing uh, process, this is an important thing to consider. But because I'm running dry and I'm gonna zero it, what I did is I lifted up the Z axis, the spindle axis, lifted it up above the board so that I don't, <laughs> I don't mess it up. So everything's set. We'll see what happens. So now I hit go to zero. Everything's set there. And we're gonna hit go. What in the world? Cannot use access values with G80. I don't know what that means. All right, well, <clears throat> apparently there's something wrong with the uh, G code. Okay, well obviously we're running and uh, the problem was that there was a rotation in the axes control. Um, I, I had to do a little quick web search here to find the control mechanism in Mach 3 where you could actually rotate the part, which is going to make everything a lot easier, so I'm glad I learned that. And I'm going through right now, and it's actually uh, cutting out without cutting out, but let me try to show you here with the camera. So here you can see the part, or the spindle moving, and then here's the control. And the green is what it's cutting out cool Tron colors there. So it looks like we're working. I'm gonna let it go through this process and we'll see how it does. <laughs> 